Oh, no, this is not for other people, only for comedians. a bunch of comedians hanging out with some friends. You're not supposed to be here, but if you're cool, you can come and hang. If you've ever been offended by anything, don't come in. Franklin, don't you? I did. I said nice to meet you. It was bad. It's it was hard bad. to I bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then he called me a bitch, and I said, "Hi, honey." You Sorry, forget everyone. that Kathy meets so many guys with dreadlocks and clarinets. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do tend to just blur That's together. Exactly it. You're in my book, by the way. I actually I'm talk in your about. Book? Yes, I talk about meeting all these guys back in the day. What book is that? With my me? shitty life. My shitty life by, by, by Kathy, Kathy Griffin. Griffin. Uh, uh, I figure prominently. Is it a bestseller? Is it a, is it a bestseller? It was the New York Times number one bestseller. Well, Take I'll that, Sarah Palin. Yeah. Yeah. Take that going, Rogue. Uh, you're like massively successful. Oh, you stop it. I mean, no, right you are, now. seriously. Don't, you uh, stop no, it no. this minute. No, uh, yes, no, I'm an empire, but so what? I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm also a pretty, pretty model. I'm but not just my... an incredibly successful but empire. But here's my question. I mean, do you think it's safe to say that you're at least as, if not more, successful than your dreams? Well, yes, that's a fact, absolutely. Then you think at some point you'll shut up? <laughs> 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 I've been in this situation before, in your chair. I think what Paul is trying to say... Me, 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 me. I'll be any comedian. Me, 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 and then there's me. <laughs> no, because I watched you on Anderson Cooper. Bitching and moaning. No, uh, that's the least of it. Right. Uh, no. What other nicknames do you have for him? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're on, you're on yeah. Anderson Cooper with, right. with Joy Behar. Joan Rivers and Phyllis okay. Diller. And so I watched it intently. You did? Because I love everybody on the show. And it was called Queens of Comedy because somebody was working overtime in the title department. I know. <laughs> and Anderson Cooper was hosting this show. Anderson say. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he did comedy. <laughs> he read a quote by Jerry Lewis talking about women are not funny. Yes. Um, the three of you proceeded to have some sort of a clusterfuck that was just noise, yeah. just constant high pitch. And I thought it's not that they're not funny; it's that they do that. It was astonishing, and I think that's why female comics get a bad rap. Well, I don't know, but I will tell you that Jerry Lewis sent me two letters this week, and so really? I have no issues with. So him. did you no, send him money? No. <laughs> I'm gonna send him a letter back because I dig him, and regardless of what he said, Jerry Lewis, right? I, it's Jerry Lewis. Yeah. I can't hate him. But yeah, he's Jerry sort of Lewis. It's like, it's like you know, if your grandfather starts saying dopey shit, you just yeah, go, you oh, just, grandpa. Yeah, you let I don't agree with that at all. I think when you get to the point in your life when your arms feel like a tube sock full of dead goldfish, <laughs> and you have a bladder the size of a bumblebee's clit, <laughs> I'm not gonna write down everything you say. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> You, 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 you may, but you see. Third now, Bumblebee's clit reference of the night. This is the, That's a good argument. You got me, you got me. Comedy that's a good one. Threes. I agree with you. At a certain point, you're done being alive. <laughs> you know, you're just done. Every health food magazine now is like, live longer. Have you ever talked to somebody in their mid 90s? <laughs> you know what you don't hear a lot? This is great. <laughs> I did the second to last Bob Hope special. Oh, I, tell I it. Commercial no, it was the second to last, or you yeah, really think it was, it was going to be the last? The, second to last. the <laughs> Grim Reaper was following him around, like getting in the way of the PAs. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, the man with the cloak and the scythe, please clear the shot. I'm very sorry. I just have to stay within sight of him. But talk about, talk about him in rehearsal, and then when we, you did the show. We had to do a commercial together, and it was literally like, hi, I'm Dana Gould. Join me and my new best friend here on his comedy special this Thursday on NBC. And then Bob was just like, they just prod him. With a, <laughs> and, he, and he just turns around and goes, hey, I love this kid. Didn't she used to be my caddy? And, then, <laughs> and that was literally first take, and I have this on tape. Uh, my new best friend here on his comedy special on NBC. And he turns to me and goes, I love this kid. Didn't you used to be my cacu? <laughs> 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 
And I'm like, cut, back yeah, to one bop. And he didn't know he'd made a mistake. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, and who's he, gonna tell him? Did you right, tell him? Well, the, no, the guy goes, oh, we're gonna go again. Like, what? <laughs> we're gonna go again, Bob. What? <laughs> and I swear to God, I goes, uh, peanuts. Peanuts? <laughs> yeah, Bob, uh, you were uh, eating some peanuts and uh, there's some on your chin. So they have to send a guy on stage to pretend to wipe peanuts <laughs> off Bob's chin. I just wish that just, he should have just been enjoying his money. Don't make him go out there. Exactly. Well, but you're assuming somebody company. made him. I mean, if you're at that position and you want to get up on stage and do a set, wouldn't you want to be able to do it? He did I mean, set. was it his own well, thing? Was, was he like, I, I'm going to work until the day when I die? Did, I agree, but I think the day he died was before the taping. <laughs> I did a contest years ago, and Milton Berle was one of the judges. Toward the He's end. a delight. And you should yeah. be happy it was just a joke contest. You know? And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I would have needed to bring my white clarinet to play in that other contest. <laughs> and my wife goes, uh, he laughed at your Civil War joke. And I'm like, of course he did. Matthew Brady took his first headshot and shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Man. Brady was a photographer <laughs> during the Civil War era. <laughs> That's the thing I love about Greg Proof, man. Proof throws out I references know. and you hear Dennis Miller go, what? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, we're gonna do that again. You had some peanuts on your chair. <laughs> That's it. To my new best friend, Dana Scruel. <laughs> I love it. I love this kid. Franklin and Johnny, when he's 90, he'll still be up there blowing his horn and telling jokes. You know? I'll still be hip, man. You'll you know, still be? I'll still fucking You'll be still hip. be getting laid. No. <laughs> In fact, I think those days are over already. <laughs> Ladies, that's a shout out. Yeah. But you know, I don't mind. I actually don't fucking mind. I, I believe you. you also, I totally believe you. I, you know, it's, I've been married forever and I have three little kids and I'm at the point in my life when I see a really hot woman on the street, I fantasize about jacking off to her. <laughs> <laughs> that is the reality you start to, to deal with, you know, which is like, I'll see a really good-looking chick with a figure and say, I can't keep up with her even if I caught her. When my shit doesn't get hard, it's over. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> like Bob Hope, should've gotten off stage. Bob Hope, you, didn't Bob Hope say that to you that you know, day? You know, if my shit doesn't no, get hard, it's over. No, my shit doesn't get hard, it's, it's over. over. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey I wanna tell you, whoever it is, I just <laughs> close my eyes and pretend it's Kay Ballard, circa 52. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> Mickey Rooney once told me about how he, quote, fucked his way across China with Red Grange. What? <laughs> really? The Galloping Ghost? Yeah. Red Grange. Apparently. Wow. Yeah. I thought Newt Rockney got all the pussy. No. <laughs> what, why is it? That Newt, was Newt Rockney. was a historical. Famous Civil War photographer, Newt Rockney. <laughs> So let's talk about how you guys all get laid at clubs after shows, and I can't go to the bar and pick up a guy because it's weird. But There's no straight guys at your show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Are there? That's the problem. What percentage of your audience do you think is gay? Actually, it's about 50% now. LGBT. 50% gay, 50% homos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 50% of anything in one block is yeah, sort of remarkable. Yes. It's good. I wish 50% of my crowd was awake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Franklin's, your, your career has been amazing. Well, it's taken that's all a surprise. Concerns, but just the sheer, <laughs> the sheer longevity is really, it's noteworthy. I mean, I think we could all learn something from Give you. us high point and low point. Uh, the high point, uh, working on Deadwood. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. a real job. Well, you did car wash also, right? I did car wash, yeah. which... It took, uh, took me a long time to appreciate it. None of us thought it was gonna be a hit. We were just happy to be working. And then I remember for a long, long time, uh, I remember thinking, I've got to do something else beside car wash. I cannot die with car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Being the high point of my career. But what turned me around was, over the years, so many people would come up to me and say I really liked it and I, uh, and I started thinking to myself, well, you must have done something right, kind of hit me, and then I started to appreciate it. Right. And now I'm really proud of it. Yeah, and no, it's, it's true. I mean, longevity in this particular arena well, is it's not really easy. tough to come by. It's fucking, it's not easy, I tell you that, you know. Uh, but, I it's a, but I read a lot of uh, 
Books? Biography. Comic books. Yeah. yeah, I was reading a Just comic books. Just let's cut the shit. Comic books. You dragged me to Comic Con. Of... It was a fucking nightmare. I'm still. Did pissed. you go to Comic Con? Yes. He oh. and all the other nerds great. dragged me. Look, you well, saw some of your favorite you... characters Guys. from pop culture at the costume contest. Morbidly obese C3PO, you saw. <laughs> Sad lesbian Klingon. It's traumatic for me. Holy fuck, I'm gonna start a band just to name it Sad Lesbian Klingon. Are you a nerd? Do you have the nerd gene? I'm a bit of a science nerd. Not that I know a lot, but it mm. fascinates me and I, and I... Do you masturbate to Bill Nye? I masturbate... I mean... No, but he was I... one of the... No but is not an answer that I would have expected. <laughs> no but. No but. But... Sometimes. Well, I was just saying that I actually song. have jacked off several times over a three-way with him and the guys from Mythbusters. Don't let me hang in. Don't let me hang in. I've been there so many times, buddy. Jizzbusters. Jizzbusters. Oh, <laughs> Dylan Brody. Dylan Brody, folks. I want to take a moment to, to bond with you, Paul, to say that the greatest moment in my career was when Professor Stephen Hawking told me I was a very funny man. And it wasn't until an hour later that I realized there's no way to tell if he's being sarcastic. <laughs> he has the most identifiable crank phone calls in there. Yeah, right. I know. I'm looking at you from your window. No. What, what are you saying? Why is Stephen Hawking considered such a smart cat? I haven't really... What do you fucking need <laughs> you know, to impress you? You know, what, is, what has he done? Well, he's a Don at Cambridge, and he's reconfigured he's physics. He's a Don. He, well, holds the the, uh, he holds the Isaac Newton chair. That is, oh, I, I think he was, a, he was on The Biggest Loser. He was on The Biggest <laughs> Loser? <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. He's, he's collaborating with Snooky on a new kind of orange. <laughs> so he's the Einstein yeah, of our generation. Song. Yes, he is the Einstein of our uh, generation. I think that would be a fair analogy, yeah. <laughs> he used to come to the Simpsons table reads a lot. I walked in one day, and there was a... Stephen Hawking used yes. to show up and at he, Simpsons table Because it's table not reads. just a little chair, it's a giant machine. It's very <laughs> much like, it's a, there's an air pump and a, there's a lot of, he has roadies oh, just yeah. to go down the hall. <laughs> Is you he know? married, by the way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and cheated oh, on his yeah. wife, that's the best part. With what? <laughs> that's the definition of man. A guy who can't move <laughs> nor talk right. still managed to cheat yes. on his wife. <laughs> You know, it, it, that is the definition of the male gene. It's like, you're, you have seconds to live. What's your name? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What did the chick look like? Who cares? Yeah. It's not about that. No, no, it is about that. I guarantee you she was better looking than, than he him. is. Yeah. <laughs> but that just shows you that God is just such a, a, a dick. It's like, here's the most, here's the smartest guy we have. What's this brain? I'm going to put it in a bag of onions. You know? You're always going after people for their appearances and things yes, like I'm that. Yes, well, and I go for them more for their behavior. For example, I went for Willow Palin recently for putting the F word, not my favorite F word, fuck, but the other pejorative for gay people on her Facebook wall. And so I went for her, even though she's only 16, because I think when you're 16, you know that that's not a nice word. I love Joan Rivers, OK? And when I was coming up, Joan, I couldn't wait to see her on TV, that she does that to her face. And I know she thinks that makes her look younger or whatever, but it doesn't. It makes it her look does. like a freak. It makes her look like <laughs> oh. a very young oh. alien. It oh. looks like she, came, she looks like she had her work done in Roswell. She looks 25. See, well, she's made her stock and trade making fun of the physicality right. of so many other people. The whole, the whole plastic surgery thing is, I don't know what that says. They all yeah. come uh, well, the I'll take all your questions. I've had everything done except the tits. But you don't look like the them. tits are oh, real and like mushy. It. Go ahead. Yeah, you didn't. Go ahead, you didn't, feel you don't take, can I feel like. your tits? Yeah. I can actually feel but your tits. Just, don't, be, don't hurt them. But Why would you assume I would do that? Uh, some guys like think it's sexy to like be love really rough. Daddy love each other. Be gentle, but you can talk. Is that what you are? Uh... Right? You can tell. Because my... All right, look, let's stop all the fun. I found a lump. <laughs> Whoa. That's... Whoa. But you don't, but you've had plastic surgery, but you don't look like the girl from the band on The Muppet Show. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them look like Janice from The Muppet Show, but, sh oh. but shiny. Well, look, that's the tragedy about female comedians is we still want to be pretty and be girls. And if one what more person calls me sir or Mr. Griffin, what I'm going to punch his pretty. fucking nuts off. What makes you think I mean, you're not pretty if you have lines on your face? There's just a lot of stuff like, you know, stars without makeup, she's looking haggard, all that stuff. And it does get to me. And so I went to the dentist. That's my code. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a root canal. 
<laughs> and a filling. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I, it's funny because the filling pulled your skin way back. I know. I'm a really good dentist. Yeah, that's but amazing. you don't know. I and a little propofol. I've known hurt. you for a long time. Yes. I've you known knew you for me long two time. noses ago. I knew two you for noses time. ago. You, that's a history. That's a history. Yeah. And uh, you know, you don't look exactly like you used to look. <laughs> but you don't look like you. You don't look like you've had a lot of work. Yeah. You don't look like. You don't look the way somebody else looks when they're underwater. <laughs> You don't look like your own reflection in a toaster. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> your turn. Yeah. So, I mean, do you really think that it's... I think probably most female comedians do it because at the core, we still want to be funny and pretty. And we're... Yeah, but, but, yeah. but I don't... Why do you I do guess, it? I guess I don't... We I live do it because I want to be funny and pretty. There you go. What? <laughs> we live in Gattaca. You're not going to give me the stone reference with the hand from the... That's Logan's run. Right. Kathy, what do you think how many more Comic-Cons do I have to take you to? <laughs> All right, but I'm taking you to the white party. I mean, All right, I... Kathy, quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Who's Dwight Fry? Oh, Kathy. <laughs> I, you lost I me. You lost me. You popular, lost me, Dana. So popular. Who is it? Dwight Fry played Renfield in Dracula and the Hunchback in oh, Frankenstein. Wow. And knowing who Dwight Fry <laughs> is is why my life when I was single was basically an avalanche of pussy. <laughs> My ability to tear off the name of Universal Studios contract players from the 40s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was your rep, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, let, don't make me go Ernest Thessinger on you, girly girl. Uh. Yeah, actually, all three of you guys, you know, like, every pop culture reference that anybody needs to know. And I know none of them. Know. I don't even know who the and president you is. A, I you would be related. so surprised to know who the president is. <laughs> well, who is the president? Really? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? What did I I'm not joking. What did I miss? <laughs> a half black guy. The half what? black. Wow. But I like to think of him as half white. Yeah. <laughs> a biracial president. I don't know how you keep all that shit in your RAM. How big is your storage? There is an ever-growing chunk of the cultural pie that I just cannot That's get. I do not watch just... any reality shows. Really? Yeah. Because... I'm going to die one day, and I don't get that time back. <laughs> and you, Can I, I look in one of the cameras and issue an apology to the Kardashians right now? Because <laughs> I feel bad what? that you have hurt a family. A family that has done nothing but raise their kids to dance on stripper poles and love people. Yeah. Yeah. So I do not appreciate that, I, and I apologize to all the Kardashians. It's, it's, nothing is the key word, though. Us Magazine did... By the way, a Stephen Hawking, go fuck yourself. But the Kardashians, we feel bad. Us Magazine did a report on a reality show. What's Three layers of right, right, nothing. Right, 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 right. It's like right. a photo of a drawing of a hologram. Yeah. It's not like it. You should have to read it through a hole in a cardboard box <laughs> to protect your eyeball. <laughs> is, is, Sorry, Frank. Is pop culture more prevalent in today's comedy than it was, say, when we were starting? Oh, that's you know, a really good I question. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. that, uh, well, personally, yes. if I was a young guy yeah, starting out to be a comedian today, I wouldn't be a comedian because I wouldn't see anything worthwhile in being a comedian. Is you that know? true? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I can't stand the shit that I see a lot of times. But it's what's what, you know? I go on stage in places and everybody knows who the situation is and everybody knows who the Kardashians I are. I even know who the situation is. Nice. Yeah. Look at you. I used to date Snooki. <laughs> Did you? Fuck no. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you date her. You give her a pickle and it's Snooki. on. That's Snooki. what happens. Snooki. Snooki and Sarah Palin are the same person. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, I understand guy, where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming that's from. That's all that is, you know? Yeah, but that's interesting. The idea, when I got in comedy uh, in the 70s, uh, I was following uh, Kelly's father, George, and, and Pryor, and uh, Klein. Those were my three mm -hmm. influences, and uh, Nichols and May. And so, because I was trying to figure out what to do for a living, I said, well, that's a profession that seems to be uh, very intelligent, so I can do that. Right, okay? right. I did not like the Bob Hope. Uh, Milton Berle uh, generation of comedians. If they had been the prevalent comedians, I would not have become a comedian. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. because they didn't inspire me. So when I saw Cosby and Carlin, I got inspired. And I said, "Oh, it's very smart," and I'm a college graduate, so I can use my mind. I used to feel, and I still do feel, that it's the comedian's job not to come out and talk about a lot of shit that everybody fucking knows about. It's the comedian's job, in I my impression to pick out what he or she is interested in, whether the public knows about it or not, and bring them into his or her mind. 
Mm -hmm. We've gone the other way now to where uh, I can only tell you right. what you're talking about. Right. You watch the late night talk shows, right? It's the same fucking monologue on every show. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. I, I think there's loads of, of groovy comedy to be, if I may use the word, uh, uh, and, and intellectual loads. comedy that's challenging. Uh, I know I play a lot of mainstream clubs, and I still throw down whatever I want to do. Someone once said to me at an alternative room, well, isn't there anything you want to talk about that you don't talk about on the comedy stage? And I'm like, well, fuck it. I talk about whatever I want oh, yeah, to talk no, about I'm, on the comedy I stage. You're, you're, not, you're not someone I'm talking about. You're no, right. I dig. You know what I mean? No, you, yeah, did. No, you did. No, no, what is, yeah. what are you did. Why don't you two hepcats smoke a reefer? <laughs> That is not a bad idea. You know, I was going to say, man. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tempt me, Dana. Don't tempt me. <clears throat> what are you holding? That's uh, the question. You don't understand. Our show has a big following of sufferers from irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, brother. Thank you. Wow, does that have tobacco in it? Or does it have it tobacco? Someone handed me this oh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I feel very naughty. <laughs> Look at oh, you. Yeah. Look. Yeah. You're looking at this like, she's looking at this like she's never seen one before in her life. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're right, this is a gateway drug. <laughs> it's a gateway to bliss, motherfucker. You start. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do some blow right now if anybody's there. <laughs> a gateway drug. Please, please, in an orderly fashion! <laughs> it, it, well, I think it's time for a little musical accompaniment. <laughs> you gotta open your mouth. Oh. No, open it wide. Open it wide. <laughs> Go on, go on. Peer pressure. Hey, dude, all the cool middle-aged comedians are doing it. <laughs> Do you have any, um, salvia? <laughs> We've got the salvia. Miley? I Miley? have a, uh... Noah? Hey, did you guys ever notice that the lights in here are all different colors? <laughs> you know what? I, Greg! I, I, we're on stage now with the Rolling Stones. <laughs> You've got to Stop play your out. guitar. I've heard you blow this thing. Let's get a little music going. Yeah, Make I'm it. just going to riff for a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You've turned into the shipping news. <laughs> Tonight's guest, Debbie Reynolds. Wait, right, we're gonna do a little mind piece. <laughs> it's improvising with his music. You know, I brought a washboard and some spoons. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you the truth. Interesting yeah. observation over my career. I started noticing that uh, comedians didn't really get groupies like musicians. No <laughs> shit. No, they didn't get. Yeah. George Carlin said the woman that goes to the show and goes home with the comedian is like the woman that goes to the organ grinder show and fucks the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I cannot put myself. No, no, no. But here's the thing: when you play an instrument, people think you're very sensitive. You know, and you're very emotional. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, right, the women, right. and women live in that realm, right? right. The idea was that um, you cannot turn pain into comedy. That's what I realized. Because when I tried to do comedy when I was depressed, I couldn't do it. If I was coming off a breakup or some emotional, really? oh God, I couldn't I've never, do it. I've never I more couldn't do it. Prolific. Yeah, look, I had a talk with Jerry Seinfeld when I told him I was coming off the road after I broke up with this chick in '84. Jerry said, No, no, no. You must, I remember this, you must press the organism. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. You know, that's yeah, what Jerry yeah. said. Yeah. And I said, fuck it, man, why have I saved up this fucking money? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, do you know David Feldman? Yeah, sure. I, I just like to make a suggestion. Yeah. You might want to try my style of comedy where I take pain and then turn it into more pain. <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned with music was you can take pain 
express pain and it can actually come out beautiful, which you cannot do with comedy. I built no, a, I had a lot of, a lot of miles off being you a miserable a person. One yeah. went man show yeah, on your I breakdown. Was gonna say, you I was that. hilarious. I was a miserable <laughs> cocksucker for a good long stretch of my life. And, Hang um, on, hold that. That's a, the, no, back this up. <laughs> back this you up. You want the soundtrack yeah. for Miserable Cocksucker? I was, a, I was a terribly miserable person for the longest time and turned it into a lot of, of really good comedy. And now I'm actually, uh, I sort of put comedy on the back burner and decided to actually build a, a, just a life for myself. No, I just built a life for myself. I worked on The Simpsons, I got married, I had a house, I had kids, and my life became very uh, happy. <laughs> then I went. Then I went. Then I went back. <laughs> then I went back into stand up talking about Kathy's pain. I just love you guys so much. Do that again, do that again. Do that again. <laughs> yeah, closing up, boss. <laughs> Franklin Ajay, everybody! An icon! An icon! Way the fuck older than he looks. <laughs> Franklin, this is Kathy Griffin! <laughs> also older than she looks. I know, it's true. Dana Gould, there's nothing else to say. Greg Proogster. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Gary Shapiro, come on back, hang out at the green room. Woo!